Hello, welcome back to Up The Villa. This is our first opposition preview of the season and I'm joined by Jake from West Ham Unofficial. And I know a lot of you last season thought Jake was one of the best opposition fans mm -hmm. that we'd had on the channel. So you got lots of compliments last time. How are you? Well, that's not a bad intro. If, um, I don't <laughs> think I could have wrote it too much better myself, Luke. Uh, thank you very much indeed for having me on. Ha had a look at the fixtures when they came out in June. Villa first. Lovely. I uh, don't <laughs> mind that at all. But uh, yeah, all good. All good, mate. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, really good, mate. So, I mean, West Ham, there's been a, a lot of change this summer. Uh, I know the manager, previous manager Moyes, was sort of up in the air, wasn't it? You know, do fans want him, do they not? Brand of football, he'd won something with you. So, before we really get into sort of like Lopetegui, mm -hmm. how, how are you feeling about this new era then, going from Moyes to Lopetegui? Um, I think... Throughout the fan base, I think the word I'd use is relief to have something different, if I'm totally honest. Uh, the vast majority, when I say the vast majority, probably 90, 95% of the fan base acknowledged towards the back end of last season that we had to have a change. Uh, and a lot of people had wanted it for a lot longer. A lot of people have wanted it pretty much or in the season we won the conference league and then it dripped into the one after that um as well but having said that you know we as a fan base can now look back and fair play to Moyes whether he was pushed out or whether he left on his own accord we don't know uh he is um he he is now in the past he did some fantastic things for our football club but it's relief it really is because I just I just couldn't and the fan base I don't think couldn't have sat through another season um of what we watched and yeah the league position wasn't bad to put it into just a little bit of context because uh, we go to a lot of the away games and we won um, we won I think five away games last season and I saw two away wins uh, last season and we went to about 12 uh, it, it, it it's painful it was painful uh, and yes people and people have said style of football you know be careful what you wish for but at the end of the day, I'm sure we'll come on to it. Some of the players we've brought in, I can guarantee you, wouldn't have been at West Ham if David Moyes was still at the club. Julian Lopetegui, I don't know. Um, I genuinely don't know. But something had to change, and it has. So the fan base is in, um, it's in a bit of excitement mode at the moment, actually, of what can come. It all just got a bit stale, predictable, and quite frankly, a change was needed, and that's what we've got. Yeah, I think it gives you... It gives you hope of, of what you want West Ham to become, which I think is, is massive then. So Lopetegui comes in. Uh, he's a manager that's got a good bit of pedigree. You know, he's been Spanish manager. He's been Real Madrid's manager. Early signs then. You know, you've not really seen a competitive game from him as of yet. So what's he been saying? What's the feel around the place? Are you getting a good vibe from him early on? Yeah, he look, he said all the right things in the media as um as expected and he's brought in some, you know, him and uh, our technical director Tim Stein and they brought in some excellent players uh and you know as we speak now we've got Aaron Wan-Bissaka having a medical um and that'll be one of the final players I think we'll side but a position that we needed uh, strength and depth in. Um, and that's the signing I'm really excited about. You know, we've brought in some really good players and in pre-season, I don't go much off pre-season. Uh, us as a fan base don't go much off pre-season because the best pre-season we've had in the last 15 years, we went down that season after. So nobody at West Ham really particularly listens to pre-season uh, and what happens. But you can use it to an extent, can't you? And uh, and we've played some nice stuff. We had a um, pre-season game at Celta Vigo at the weekend and we played some really nice stuff uh, from what I saw of it. So, yeah, I think it's excitement. Lopetegui, um, he's brought in some interesting players um, and he's saying some interesting things. And I think it'll be an improvement in the style of play. It's not going to be you know, and or anything like that. It's not going to be crazy, crazy, but there's going to be some changes uh, and hopefully for the better. So we'll have to see what happens um, next Saturday week. You're going to learn as quick as we're going to learn because we don't quite know what to expect. Uh, so it's going to be interesting either way. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, touching on sort of like the early signs to be system and what you've spotted. I've, I've had a look at a couple of your, your formations. You've been... Mm. You know, going with a 4 3 3, which I think that is his preferred formation anyway. I think that really suits your team anyway, you know, with yeah. Caduce, with, with Bowen, and, and I think that a midfield three 
would be really lively. And, and I think that system's there. He's been going with a bit of a five at the back, which I don't expect you to go with. So how, how do you how do you think the system's going to be? And I think from an outsider as a Villa fan, I can guess that you all want to play better football. So the football's probably going to be more exciting, more entertaining. So are you pleased with that? And then like you mentioned earlier, to caveat that, you know, Moyes did get results playing a little bit sort of, you know, negative-ish football. So do, do you think you're going to go so far one way, completely opposite to Moyes, or do you think it's going to be a bit complementary of, of the two? Yeah, I think I think there's going to be a mix of both. Now, look, I've spoken to some, um, some of your good friends, Wolves fans, um, about about what he's like and they said that that he's not going to be crazily expansive he's not going to be you know um as as expansive as you know i mentioned dan earlier's first thing that popped to mind really attacking let's go and win manager but it's not going to be as pragmatic as Moyes. i think um you're not going to find too many that are more pragmatic than Moyes um in the sense of style of play and i mean it was even in the euros it was quite funny somebody was on the bbc Moyes, and he asked um he was asked at half time um and I think it was a big team. They were behind. And he said, would you change anything? No, he said, I'll keep it as it is. Um, he's a very keep as it is manager, boys. <laughs> and um, and he steadied the ship and it's all going to be OK, sort of manager. I think that's going to change slightly. Uh, I think Lopetegui is going to act a bit more. I think there's going to be a bit more go in us, to be honest with you. And I'm going to be honest, we've got more options now. You know, Moyes wanted a small squad and that's what he had. We've brought in a lot of players. We've brought in a lot of attacking players. Now, you mentioned the formations there. 4 3 3 is what I'd expect. Um, you know, we've played with the three of midfield. It's worked with the players we've had. We've brought in new ones, of course. But uh, going forward, we've got a hell of a lot of wingers. We've got a lot of attacking players and how they're all going to fit in, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but Moyes didn't have that luxury because he didn't want it. Lopetegui's got it. We've now got a much bigger squad. We're now having to work out whether we've got enough homegrown players. We've never had to do that over the last four years. Mm -hmm. Moyes used the same 15 players through a season of 50 games through Europe Cup competitions and in the Premier League. We've got options galore now, which is what we didn't have in the past. That's going to help as well. It's going to be better. It's not going to be the complete opposite of Moyes, but it's going to be better. That's my expectation. Yeah, and you've been exciting in the transfer market. Somerville, really like him. You know, an exciting young player from Leeds. Tore up the championship last season. Full crew up top. Interesting. wan Saka, <laughs> Kilman. You've signed a central midfielder. Have you signed an Argentinian as well? Midfielder. Yeah. Yeah, Guido Rodriguez, his name is. Yeah. yeah, so talk to me about your window. Are you, are you happy? Do you think there's going to be anything else that happens? There wasn't too much expectation coming into this transfer window. It was going to be more of bring a couple in and then we're going to have to sell before we buy. We were all told we had about 80 million to spend. Well, we spent that in the first two uh, players that we brought in. We brought in Max Kilman. It's a bit much. I'm going to be honest for what he is. I think, you know, we paid £40 million. Pounds. That seems to be um, what everybody's saying. I hope he lives up to the expectation. I really do. We've brought in uh, as a free agent, Guido Rodriguez. I'm going to be honest. I know very minimal uh, about him. He impressed uh, in our pre-season game at the weekend. So uh, so he's an option uh, uh, in defensive midfield. There's no doubt about that. Somerville, really nice. I like that signing. Um, and he's, yeah, you know, Kilman, Lopetegui knew him before anyway. You know, he's, he's used his sort of contacts a little bit, Lopetegui. Um, and then we've got Fulkrug, who is... Um, hopefully going to be the natural progressor onto Mikel Antonio. We've had, we've bought strikers galore and it just hasn't worked. So hopefully this finally is the one uh, that allows Mikel Antonio to step aside and become the number two throughout the whole entirety of the season. But we'll wait and see. He's 31 full Krug, but um, you know, there's still a couple of years left in him. There must be a reason they bought him. Hopefully we'll find out in the coming weeks. And overall, we've made some really astute signings. We needed a right back. We've got to go Wamba Saka. That excites me. Um, I think he's a really Really neat and tidy player. Uh, Man United is the graveyard of footballers and he's managed hopefully to get out um, OK, uh, not too tarnished, uh, unlike some others. And, and look, we've made some really good signings and I'm happy with it. Uh, we've made more signings than I expect. We've signed a young Brazilian winger, another winger, uh, Louis Guilherme as well. So we've signed some 
some different players, some um, some players that we've never heard of alongside Jean-Claire Tobedo, centre-half. I keep thinking about, oh yeah, there's one more, there's two more. How many people have <laughs> signed it? Uh, I'll get there in the end. Jean-Claire Tobedo, um, you know, one of the uh, one of the really exciting centre halves in France last year. We we took him under Juventus's nose. They had the deal done, and uh, our technical director went in and swooped him, and somehow convinced him to come to West Ham with no European football over Juventus. God knows how or why. Uh, and that's it. There's been some really nice signings. Do you think not all um, gelled together? But do you, do you think Kilman will be with Tadebo then? Do you think that's going to be? I, I do. The two. Um, yeah, I do. Well, we're expecting Kurt Zuma to depart the club in the coming days. There's rumours that he's failed his medical, which wouldn't surprise me at all because <laughs> his legs are absolutely battered. He's a brilliant yeah. player. You know, he's been brilliant for us, Zuma. Um, but his legs are absolutely long gone. <laughs> we've got we've got Mavropanos and a Gerd who had mistakes in them last season. So I think Lopetegui's had one look at our defence from last season and went, right, I'm stripping it down and starting again. And that's what he's done effectively. He signed a right back in two centre-halves. Uh, so he's pretty much started again in that sense. Uh, and I'd expect it to be Kilman and um, Kilman and Tobedo in there uh, as the two. Yeah, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully it works. <laughs> yeah, one player that you were linked with, Duran. <laughs> Why have you not got him? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was all a bit weird. Steiden, our technical director, he was really pushing the deal. Uh, and I've never seen, well, I haven't for some time seen West Ham Twitter blow up so much when I saw £32 million bid plus Lewis Orford, one of our youngsters, and a sell-on something or other as well. Uh, let's just say it wasn't met gracefully from the fan base. And for whatever reason, I mean from what i can gather was is he your like number two striker he, he he didn't start week in week out did he no yeah no so yeah he's our he's our number two uh we have had a couple of problems with him along the way um he's wanted to go to chelsea and then he wanted to go to you guys and he was doing that on on instagram wasn't he which it was I just all a bit weird really believe that you rejected 32 million quid for it. how much did you pay for him to start with uh about 18 19 um, so were you shocked when you saw that you projected 32 million plus a youngster? Um, I just think we wanted 40. I think we right. wanted in and around 40. And we've just been hard with that valuation. And I think it's not been met. And no. there is talk that we have had an offer from Saudi and right. it's in and around that amount. So I don't, I don't know what happened. But yeah, it's interesting that you didn't go for Duran. Uh, so... Thoughts on the season as a whole then? You're a club that has had European football for the previous three seasons. Three seasons. This is where you haven't got it. So I, I, I imagine you're going to want to get back into that. So what would be a good season for Lopetegui? I was asked this question the other day and I had to sit there and go, do I want to push the boat out a little bit here? I'm going to say, I'm going to say top half, but I'm also going to caveat that with a obvious indication of progression in the next mm. season if I can see where it's going uh I'll be happy with that listen I've got no idea what's going to happen we've had Moyes four and a half years uh and I could have told you what would have happened at the start of last season before it happened I could have told you how we'd have lined up and I could have told you pretty much where we'd have finished and that was the predictability of it this year oh I haven't got a clue um <laughs> anything could happen to us we could all these players could not gel together it could be an absolute flipping nightmare and we could be 17th at Christmas right I hope not I really do uh but that is a quite severe possibility i'd expect us to be around mid table but all these players if they can gel together and if their quality can be expressed then i wouldn't be surprised if we're lurking around that that famously prestigious conference <laughs> league spot um <laughs> once again but maybe i mean some people have chucked us up up there with with you know with you guys can we push that area i'm a little bit hesitant in that to be honest i'd take uh, i'd take us finishing top half and hopefully Going forward, we can push on uh, and improve. But an outside shot of Europe is what I'm going to say. Yeah, I think you're going to have a, an exciting season. To be fair, I think I think you've you know your players you've signed, you've got a lot of ammunition. You know, mm. if one player gets injured, you've got someone else that can step in there. Mm. I think you've got a really good manager that's managed at, at the elite. So you know he's not managed there for you know no reason at all. And and I think that the fan base. Are, 
are, are going to get behind him. And, and I do see a little bit of similarities between Unai coming in at Villa and Lopetegui going in at, at West Ham. I think if he can bring everybody together and everybody's pushing from the same sort of like him sheet, then mm. you, you, you'll just flourish. So I, I think it's going to be really exciting. So what are, what are your thoughts on Villa this season? Where, where do you think Villa will be? Where will, will we be in the league? It's a it's a real tough one, isn't it? Because um, because I've heard there were some FFP restrictions coming into the transfer window, and you had to be careful uh, in that front. And um, and that you sold quite a lot, from what I can um, from what I can gather, as I was bringing in as well. That the Champions League is going to take its toll. Um, it will do, and it will be a brilliant experience. It will be absolutely brilliant, but it will take its toll unless you've got a really really strong uh, squad. You've got you know, there's 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 loads of factors that play into it. When you're going to be playing 50 plus games, injuries, suspensions, you know, there's 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 external sort of factors that can play its part. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't expect you to be pushing top four again with the Champions League uh, element of it. I think it will be a good season if you have a good go in the Champions League and maybe maintain a European spot, which uh, which one. Uh, remains to be seen uh, but I think really for you next season it's about enjoying it um, it's you know it's about enjoying those nights um, away and at home as well at Villa Park I can imagine what that's going to be like um, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night so um, at the end of the day um, you've just got to enjoy that and hopefully keep up with it uh, in the Premier League you know you did it in the Conference League um, last year you know what you're doing in terms of the Thursday, Sunday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday football. Um, it's tough. Uh, it can be. And it's only going to get tougher for you boys. And I just hope that you can, um, you know, I hope you can maintain it and keep keep up a good level on all fronts. Um, yeah, let a couple of players go, I've seen. Um, maybe had to. I don't know. So was it was it? Was it Douglas Louise that's gone? Did I yeah, get yeah. that? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's so it's so is that going to hinder midfield wise good player? Yeah, yeah, I think you've been really fair there, and and it's pretty much spot on with what I think. You know, try and go well in the Champions League, European football. I, I think we both realise the importance of of European football. I mean, for us now, this is our second season in Europe. You've had three seasons, and now you're out of it. And the, the actual importance of, of getting there and staying there and keep playing in Europe, that, that's an aspiration of, of our club. And it's what we want to keep having season on, season out. So it is difficult, but I think it's a challenge. And, and, and I think, you know, when you're trying to challenge in those European places, it, it's not going to be easy, is it? So I think you've got to just rally, relish the challenges. So let's move on then. 5.30, London Stadium. Possibly one of the worst away grounds to go to <laughs> because of the view. Um, yeah. Not the best. But um, what are you expecting from the game then? I, I think I think it's going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be... Uh, yeah, I, I think... It, I've got 2-2 two, two in my head. I think... I think what's going to happen... Uh, <laughs> you let me know what you think. <laughs> I, I think defensively, you might have a little bit of a frailty early on while you're trying to just settle. And, and I think in this game especially, I think there'll be a lot of goals. So, um, yeah, I think it'd be exciting, entertaining. The unknown, like what, we, what we've what we said, we, do, we don't really know what's going to go on with you guys. I think we've got a little bit of an unknown going into it as well. So so where are you at? What, what do you feel like the game's going to be like? Yeah. I like that unknown element of it, and that's um, and that's what I'm going to express as well. I genuinely don't know. Um, I'm going into it with a fresh. Like, I haven't watched too much of the preseason because I try not to. Um, I'm excited by the players we've brought in, but genuinely, I don't know. Look, five thirty kickoff. Um, it's going to be pretty loud in there. I like to think first game of the season. There's excitement back in the fan base with the players we've brought in. So it's going to be loud in there. There's going to be expectations uh, to start. I'm sure you looked at a fixture list and went West Ham away. All right, let's get it out of the way. Let's get them idiots out of the way. That horrible ground, especially if you're in the top tier, we know it's an absolute shambles. Um, but it's just, yeah, anything could happen. Um, we could 
we could sit defensively, <laughs> which could happen, uh, or we could come out and have a good go. I've genuinely got no idea. Julian Lopetegui is going to surprise me whichever way. We could sit defensively. We could really try and get at you. Um, it could be nil-nil. Well, no, actually, no. I, I retract that. It won't be nil-nil because uh, we won't keep a clean sheet, especially with two new centre-halves. We haven't played with each other before, so we will concede. Um, I take your point in terms of defensive frailties earlier on. That's inevitable for us with practically one the Saka will play, I'd assume. So with three new def um, defenders in a back four, there's always going to be teething problems uh, at the start. And yeah, I'd, I'd expect us to score. I don't know how we're going to set up. I really don't. So I'm not being much help here, I'm aware, because <laughs> uh, I don't know really. But I'd, I'd expect goals, hopefully hopefully both teams attacking players um, turn up and it should be exciting. Sky have picked it for 5.30, so they must be mm. seeing sight. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I mean, our first game of the season last year, I feel, I'm i sure that was 5.30 as well, and we lost 5-1 to Newcastle. So <laughs> I hope we don't start like that this season. Right, so uh, Jake, it's been great having you on again. I'm sure we'll catch up later on in the season. So thanks for coming on, mate. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good luck for the rest of the season.